you know, one day I'm going to get these booktube challenges right. But today's not the day. Hello, I'm Tim and I have too many books. I found another booktube challenge to have a go at and fail at. Uh, it's called Cloak and Dagger Christmas and the prompts in this challenge are based on the song The Twelve Days of Christmas. Uh, six of the prompts are about um, books and six of the books are about sort of mental health and pampering yourself. Now I don't deserve to be pampered so I'm only really I was only really interested in the book uh, sections of the book part of this uh, challenge and only three of them really stood out to me. Now I've got such a complex and um, uh, convoluted book, uh, TBR that uh, I'm probably never going to get around to reading uh, most of the books I might put on a challenge but everything I'm going to mention today is either I've either read it or um, if it's not on my TBR now it's notionally on my TBR in the future but because my TBR is so large and long and so far in the future um, you know I start have to, having to think whether or not I'll still be alive to read some of these books it's a rather depressing thought anyway um, this challenge is hosted by Kate Howe, Janelle at Tufon Books, Kate at Novel Nomad, Melanie Martin and Carolyn from Karen's Reading Ramblings. Uh, I've picked uh, three of these challenges to, to uh, recommend books for because you know that's all I'm good for really and they're all based around the lines and the gifts given in the song The Twelve Days of Christmas. We start with a partridge in a pear tree and this uh, prompt is all about picking uh, books with alliterative titles. Now all the books have to be um, detective novels and we're usually going through towards the cosy side of detective or mystery novels rather than the hard-boiled side of detective or mystery novels. And my first book is uh, Duplicate Death by Georgia Heyer. Now Georgia Heyer, um, somewhat controversial for her private life, views in her private life, which don't always um, translate over to her books. Uh, this is one of her detective novels. Um, her detective novels were uh, often plotted out by her husband who was a barrister and then she would um, basically fill in all the character bits and all the you know and all the interesting bits of the story. Uh, she is best known really for pioneering um, Regency romance. Uh, if you've read any Regency romance they're probably uh, copying Georgette Hare more than they're copying uh, J Jane Austen. The next book is uh, Josephine Tay's The Singing Sands. Uh, this is the sixth in her uh, Inspector Alan Grant series of books. Um, Josephine Tay, best known for uh, The Daughter of Time, um, uh, Brett Farrar, The Franchise Affair, Miss Pym Disposes. Uh, she has actually had her own detective novel series uh, written by Nicola Upson, which um, has uh, Josephine Tay solving her own mystery murder, mysteries and murders, etc. And it is rather annoying because if you're looking up Josephine Tay, um, you may want to read, be reading Josephine Tay rather than Nicola Upton, uh, Upson because although those books are fine you know you kind of want Nicola, Josephine Tay instead. The next book is Diamond Dust by Peter Lovesey. Uh, Peter Lovesey created his character Peter Diamond. He is a, a detective mostly based in the city of Bath and uh, it's a long-running series of novels. Um, Diamond Dust is the fourth or fifth book in the series. We now move to, on to Peter James's a Mind to Murder. Uh, this is one of her uh, Commander Dalgleish novels. Um, Dalgleish is um, a poet as well as a police inspector. Uh, they're very um, introspective, very cerebral, these, these detective novels, and um, are absolutely fascinating. I'm gradually working my way through them uh, as, and, uh, you know, we'll get through the whole lot at some point, but they are, it's a very long running series as quite a lot of these books are. Also, we have Reginald Hill's Pictures of Perfection. This is one of his D.L. and Pasco novels. Uh, D.L. spelt Dalziel um, and Pasco are um, a couple of ill-sorted detectives uh, working, I think, mostly in Yorkshire. And um, it's, a, again, a lo another long-running series and very entertaining. They made a television series of it uh, starring Warren Clark. Uh, which is a really good um, piece of television. Um, I'm going to briefly mention a couple of the more hard-boiled um, detective novels that you could do. There is uh, 
Sarah Paretsky with her uh, Detective Yael Wachowski brushback. Um, again, um, Sarah Paretsky, love her to bits, and uh, but Vio Wachowski is very hard boiled, and you get kind of get the you want more mystery than crime, and these are very definitely crime. Another example of the hard boiled detective novels is. Lady in the Lake by Raymond Chandler. This is one of Raymond Chandler's books about his detective Philip Marlowe. Um, and these books are really, really well written. Um, it's the sort, they're the kind of books, uh, Raymond Chandler is the kind of writer who, if you think you can write a detective novel, will tell you, uh, you need to think again, you need to get a much better writer because yeah, <laughs> you don't really get too much better than in, in style of writing than Raymond Chandler. The last book series I'm going to mention um, with alliterative titles is the Feathering series by Simon Brett. Simon Brett is a prolific author, has been writing since the 1970s, uh, has produced a lot of um, detective novels, a lot of book series, probably most famous for his Charles Paris detective novels, which are all about an actor who also solves crimes uh, and is a better, actually a better sleuth than he is a, an actor. And that's part of the fun of the series. He also wrote a a series of books called the Mrs. Pargeter series, which are about um, a woman who uh, is the widow of a crime boss who uh, then starts moving into solving murders. Um, Feathering is about a small village called Feathering where two women, um, their na next door neighbors, I think, and they, um, they solve mysteries around there. The first book in the series is called The Body on the Beach and every single of the 20 new novels in the Feathering series are alliterative titles. And so if you want just one recommendation for alliterative titles, it's probably go for Simon Brett. And I'm not just saying that because a family member is um, mentioned in the dedication of one of the books, which, which they are, but you know, they're still very good books. And uh, Simon Brett is a, an author, very well worth reading, I think, and uh, well worth discovering. Uh, the last partridge in a pear tree book I'm going to talk about uh, isn't actually a detective novel, it, but it is alliterative. It's called The Mal Malice Massacre. It is by uh, Dennis Wheatley and um, J.G. Lynx. It's, um, it's be your own detective. It's a dossier. It's full of facts and information that will tell you about a case. Um, there are letters, there are documents, there are photographs, uh, there are exhibits, and you basically have to use those to solve the case. And at the back, uh, there is a, well, previously sealed bit, which tells you the solution to the crime, and you see if you're gonna do them. Now, four of these were produced, and it's the sort of thing that, when I get to a thousand um, subscribers, I will probably try to um, solve one of these, do one of these as a, a you know, a, an online solu a solution uh, where you can watch me try to solve one of these. I'm not entirely sure how I'd, how I'd go about filming it, but it's uh, worth trying, I think. The next of the prompts that stood out to me was uh, Free French Hens, which is to pick novels which are written in a foreign language or set in a country which is foreign to you. Now, I live in Britain, so everything in Britain is pretty much out, uh, but I can do almost anything else. Now, when Kate Howe talked about this particular prompt, she mentioned uh, Donna Leon's Inspector Brunetti series. Now I've read those, they're pretty good. Um, Inspector Brunetti is um, based in Venice. So when I think of a Venetian detective, I tend to think of Michael Dibdin's character, Aurelio Zen. Aurelio Zen is a somewhat amoral uh, Venetian detective. He's mostly based in Rome, but he does go out throughout Italy. The first of the Aurelio Zen novels by Michael Dibdin is Rat King. They are somewhat gritty, and like I say, he is a, a somewhat amoral character. Now, when I think of Italian detectives, one of the ones that really stands out to me is Andrea Camilleri's Inspector Montalbano. This has been made into a very successful Italian television series, very long running, uh, and they have uh, they do all of, they've done all of the books, and it is so popular that parts of the place where it is set have been named after Inspector Montalbano. Inspector Montalbano lives in uh, Sicily. He lives in a, t a fictional town called Vigata. And um, yeah, the, the books are very entertaining. The first book in the series is The Memory of Water. And uh, again, a very big series of books and very well worth catching if you can. Another European set uh, police series is Martin Walker's Bruno Chief of Police series. This is a set of mystery novels written and set in around 
um, the Dodogne, um, Perigord, uh, and is um, very firmly in truffle country and often the stories revolve around uh, truffle hunters, um, at least some of the initial ones do, and sort of various truffle festivals that they have in the town where Bruno is the chief of police. The French have a rather strange, or at least strange to um, British eyes, um, way of doing police. You have uh, the gendarmerie who are basically a paramilitary force, you have um, the ordinary policemen who are basically um, sort of traffic cops, and then you have um, other peop people like the detective force who are um, a law unto themselves. So it's a, a rather confusing mixture, and uh, the Bruno series really plays into that. Another very interesting series is a Dutch-based series um, of Van der Velt novels written by Nicholas Freeling. Uh, the first in this series is Love in Amsterdam. Um, this was made into a television series which was very successful in the 1970s. Um, it had a theme song which uh, made it into the pop charts in Britain. Uh, it has been more recently remade with uh, new actors. Not sure that I like that new series as much as I re seem to remember liking the old one. A book which is more of a thriller than um, a sort of cosy mystery is Gorky Park by Martin Cruz Smith. This is his first of his um, Arcadi Renko uh, series of uh, detective novels. Um, Gorky Park was made into a really pretty good film by uh, in the 1980s, uh, starring William Hurt. Uh, fascinating um, set, set, series set during in Soviet Russia um, at the height of the Cold War in the in the 80s. Going slightly further afield, we have Alexander McCall Smith's um, Mama Romatwe series, um, the number one detective, ladies detective agency, um, a set of books set in, I believe, Botswana. Uh, about a woman who starts up her own detective agency. There's a series set in India um, featuring detectives uh, Wyndham and Banerjee, set in 1921. These are a series of books by Abhya Mukherjee, uh, starting with The Rising Young Man. The novels tend to be about the turmoil after the First World War and um, a rather unconventional detective who doesn't really, really feel at home in the Raj, but does feel at home in India. Uh, out together with his uh, assistant who is obviously an Indian working for the British and uh, is somewhat conflicted by that. A series of novels I was pointed to this year is um, Seiji Yokomitsu's uh, Kusuki Kinyachi uh, novels. Uh, this is The Hoji Murders which is I think the first in the um, of them that you can get in, uh, in, in English translation. Uh, there are, I think, a, a large number of these books, but only about four or five have been translated into English so far. But it is a very entertaining series, even if he does seem to scratch his head a little bit too much. Now, as one of the hosts of this challenge is Kate at Novel Nomad, who I believe is Australian, it should therefore be almost compulsory that we add in Kerry Greenwood's uh, Freeney Fisher novels. Uh, these are uh, very entertaining books, uh, set in the 1920s. Um, Ms. Fisher is a um, former ambulance driver, expert shot, and a, a really good choice as a detective. Uh, and she is very, much, very, very unconventional, especially for the 1920s. She shocked absolutely everyone around her, which is great, great fun. I'm going to go back to Europe for the last book uh, in this particular prompt, and that is um, the grandmaster, perhaps, of the French detective novel, Georges Simonon, who wrote his uh, Inspector Maigret novels. The first of the Inspector Maigret novels is Peter the Latvian, uh, which is almost certainly worth reading. Mm -hmm. very... uh, Georges Simonon did have a somewhat uh, troubled private life, um, especially due to his activities during the Second World War, uh, which him being French, you may be able to guess at. The final challenge that I'm going to talk about is uh, number 10, 10 Lords of Leaping, which is uh, to pick a book with nobility in it. Now, what most people are going to be doing is reading some Dorothy L. Sayers and the Lord Peter Whimsey story. Now, I decided to go up slightly further up the um, scale of nobility to, um, well, monarchs and princes. The first book to mention is S.J. Bennett's The Winds Are Not. Uh, this is a book featuring the detective talents of Queen Elizabeth II. Uh, I mentioned her in a previous video when I talked about Queen Elizabeth II in fiction. Uh, these books are very entertaining. Um, she gets Queen Elizabeth really well, rather well and some of the people around her. From what I can tell, in, I've only read one of the books so far. I'm definitely going to read the other books. Now she's, 
I think she's published three and is due to publish another one. But uh, And you might say, well, she's kind of run out of material because they are sort of contemporarily set. However, she has planted enough um, possibilities in the past of because uh, the Queen basically uses her uh, uses an assistant and there have been lots of assistants over the years and she's been solving crimes since she was a teenager uh, so there's lots of sort of clues like that that, that to tell you that SJ Bennett might start going back into the past to look at some of the past um, crimes that the Queen solved. The last book I'm going to talk about is Bertie and the Tin Man by Peter Lovesey uh, this is one of a short series of books written by Peter Lovesey about Prince Albert Edward, Prince of Wales, first son of Queen Victoria and who later became Edward VII. He uh, was a, a bit of a scoundrel in his life and perhaps um, a lot worse, uh, certainly in his private life, uh, was certainly very, very unfaithful, had a, a string of mistresses uh, almost openly and almost quite publicly. And in this book he's getting involved with a person known as the Tin Man who is a uh, involved in horse racing and something of a scoundrel himself and possibly a worse scoundrel than Edward VII. So like I said one day I'll get all these challenges right uh, and uh, do a TBR which I can actually read in the time given but um, I hope you've enjoyed my choices.